Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. On this video, I'm going to make one of those super cute and trendy peekaboo shirts. So if you're interested in seeing how I make mine, as well as learning about some alternative ways that you could do it, keep watching the video. So let's just start with what the peekaboo shirt is. Basically, you have some type of t-shirt. It doesn't matter if it's cotton, polyester, a blend. It really doesn't matter because all you're going to do is cut slits in this shirt, the frays hang down, and you see what's underneath of it. Then the other part of the shirt can be one of many things. In my case, I'm going to sublimate on this polyester fabric, and then I'm going to adhere it to the inside of my frayed shirt. But if you just wanted to wear a second t-shirt under it that has something on it you like, you could just wear a shirt under it. If you want to attach, maybe you have an old shirt that you loved. It was a good concert shirt. If you're like me, you've gained a little weight in the last years. It doesn't fit anymore. You could cut out the front of that and adhere that to the inside of your frayed shirt. Or maybe you really like working with HTV. You could put a design on a piece of fabric and adhere that on the inside. So really, you're just limited by your imagination. There's so many ways you could do this. Okay, so in my case, like I said, I'm going to sublimate on this piece of polyester. Since I am doing a sublimation print, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut around my fabric just so I don't waste it. Now I did try out this fabric with part of this design last night just to make sure that it sublimates well, and it did. Then because I have some OCD tendencies, I'm going to use this ruler as a guide. What I want to do is leave enough white space so that I can attach my heat and bond to the white space and not to my actual picture. I have my heat press heating up to 395 and the timer on it set for 45 seconds. If you're using sublimation, you definitely want to get your image on your fabric before you apply any heat and bond to it. So just like always when you're sublimating, I'm going to go ahead and lint roll this. You want to get all those loose fibers off. If you don't, even if those fibers are little white fibers or maybe you have dust, those will turn some really weird colors. They might be blue, they might just be really dark, but they will definitely show up on your sublimation. Then, because sublimation and moisture just don't mix well, I'm going to pre-press this for 15 seconds to remove any moisture that might be in this material. Now that I've pre-pressed this, I want to let it cool off some just so that when I put my print down on it, it doesn't start to sublimate before I have it exactly where I want it. Okay, that looks pretty centered. I'm going to go ahead and put this heat tape on it so that when I move it back to the heat press, it can't shift. The other thing is, the heat tape holds it down in place so that when you close the platen of your heat press or you're setting an easy press down on it, there's no shifting. That shifting can cause shadowing, also called ghosting. Okay, probably overkill, but I'm going to do two more little pieces of tape. The other thing is, when you're lifting your heat platen off your substrate, the lifting of that can kind of make your things jump up a little bit or pop up a little bit. And if your paper shifts then, again, that's going to cause some ghosting. So I like to get mine taped down fairly well. Now my heat press is up to temperature. So if you can see any of the mess on the floor, forgive all the cords. I have a convection oven in here that I use for tumblers, and that requires a really heavy-duty cord. So that orange cord over there, if you can see it, that's why I have that in here. Okay, so I'm going to put this material side down with the paper on top. I have a Teflon sheet on bottom 
and a piece of butcher paper. I'm going to place another piece of butcher paper and another Teflon sheet on top. Now this is just an inexpensive heat press that I got off of Amazon. It's not the quality of like a heat press nation one, but this was a little over $200. That fit in my budget and it really works well for me. I'm just doing my YouTube videos and then some gifts for friends and family. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this back to the table and we'll check it out there. Okay, let's see how this turned out. That is very, very cute. That's going to look great peeking through my shirt. Now the next thing that I want to do is a little bit different than what I've seen on YouTube. But I was just wondering how would it work if I did the process kind of backwards. So instead of attaching my heat and bond to the inside of my shirt, I'm going to attach it to my sublimation print. In reading this soft stretch, I won't be using it because you have to add steam to it. And I don't want to go get my iron and use steam. I'm just going to use my little Easy Press Mini. You could also put it back in the heat press as long as you only have it in there for a very short time and it doesn't cause your ink to reactivate. So in this case, since I can't use the tape, I'm going to go ahead and use the good old fashioned heat and bond. Now you can buy these rolls at Walmart, off Amazon, in the craft stores. There's a lot of places you can get this. This is the Ultra Hold. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and lay the ruler down so I can use that as a guide for my rotary cutter. And then I'm going to cut it about a half inch wide. There's no real right or wrong width but I think that would be a good width for the white space that I left on my sublimation print. Okay, I have my strips cut. Now I want to show you on this heat and bond. There is a rough side, it's shiny, and then there's a paper side. Both sides have adhesive on them, but the paper is covering over the adhesive on this side. So what you do is you put the rough side the adhesive side down on your fabric. Then you're supposed to press it for just two seconds. Now the various types have different instructions, so make sure you read the instructions for what you have. But I'm going to put it down for a couple of seconds, then I'll just slowly make my way up the side of my tape. Now what I'm trying to do is have the edge of my tape really close to my actual print. Then I'm just going to repeat that for the other three sides. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that on while it cools off. I need to figure out where I want to make my slits. Okay, so obviously this will be behind the shirt, but that looks like a pretty good placement. Now remember earlier when I said I had some OCD tendencies? So a person like me <laughs> makes a little grid like this. What I did is I drew lines every three quarters of an inch apart and then I left some on the side because this piece of paper is about the same width as my actual picture. So in this case I'll make the slits to about, oh, about a third of an inch from the side of the picture. I can always use my scissors and cut that further if I want to but these are the cuts I'm going to start with. So I'll go ahead and remove my print.
Now you could put a piece of thick cardboard inside of your shirt. You could put just a plastic cutting board that you use in your kitchen. You see you could move that around. That'd be big enough. Another option that I thought about, you get two of these little thin cutting boards at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, but I experimented on it and using quite a bit of force, you cut through it. So I'm not going to use that. Now my shirt's wide enough that I can actually put my cutting mat inside of it. If you're making this for kids or you're a skinny little thing, then you might not have one of these that fits. But in my case, I think it's going to fit perfectly. Now, I think I'm moving up my paper, so I'll just have to do the best I can. It's not an exact science. It's going to be okay regardless. Okay, I think that's going to be good. Now, I think I will go ahead and put a couple pieces of tape on this just to kind of keep it from shifting around. It really wouldn't need to be heat tape, but that's what I have in here. So that's what I'll use. So for me, I'm going to use my rotary cutter. You could just use scissors, but I think this will be the easiest for me. Okay, so it looks like all my cuts went through. That seems a little narrow. So I may need to cut those longer. Let me put my design inside and we'll see. Then once I get it adhered, I can kind of stretch on these and thin those out. But I don't want to mess them up too much yet. Because I am going to put this under my heat press again. I'm going to go ahead and put this under here and see what it kind of looks like for now. All right, I'm sure those are going to have to be wider, but again, I'm going to wait until after I get this attached to the shirt before I do that. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn my shirt inside out. And then I want this as smooth as I can get it. So don't do what I did and pull on those frays until after this step. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take the paper backing off the heat and bond. That's going to expose the other side of the adhesive. Now I'll turn my image over. Now I said I was going to do it on my heat press, but I think I'll just use my little mini press. It'll take a little bit longer, but I don't have to move it around. Once I get it adhered with my mini press, I can always put it under the heat press just to get a little better tack. So this time you're supposed to put it on for eight seconds. So it's going to take me a while, but I'm going to hold it down for eight seconds. Then I'll move it up and I'll move it up. Then once I've done that, I will put it under my heat press just to give it a good even pressure. Now, if you are working with a light colored shirt, you may want to put a piece of butcher paper or something between the front and the back of your shirt while you're doing this, just so none of that sublimation ink gets on it. First of all, I'm trying to just stay on the tape for the most part. And then second of all, working with this dark black shirt, I don't think I'm going to have an issue. Okay, so I have that tacked down. So now I am going to go ahead and put a piece of paper in between the front and the back of the shirt. 
Now I went ahead and turned the temperature on the Easy Press down just to 300 and I'm going to set this under it for about six seconds. So let's go ahead and turn this right side out and see what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and cut those slits bigger. What I can do is I can just put my scissors underneath and then it's going to bump in to where the fabric is adhered to the polyester fabric, or where the two fabrics are adhered together. All right, well, I'm going to put this on my mannequin. I'll take a picture of it and put it at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching today and sticking it out till the end. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Until my next video, bye-bye.